And, and what I'll do is I'll hold up the, I'll do this when it, at the section in you know, the appropriate way. So, so, and it's, like I said, it's five sections, so which is good, because then I don't have to do like that. <laughs> Come on, all you ghosts. <laughs> I heard a little cough in the room and turned, but no one was there except the flowers Sarah bought me and my death's head glow in the dark keychain that lights up and moans when I press the button on top of its skull and the ghost I shyly name a glow. Are you there, a glow? I said in my mind, reader, exactly the way you just heard it in yours about four poem time units ago. Unless you've already put down the paper directly after the mention of poetry or ghosts. Readers, I'm sorry for some of you this is not a novel. Goodbye. <laughs> now it's just us and the death's head and the flowers and the ghost in San Francisco thinking together by means of the ancient transmission device. I'm sorry, but together we are right now thinking along by means of an ancient mechanistic system no one invented involving super microscopic particles that somehow, weird, enter through your eyes or ears, depending on where you are right, right now reading or listening. To me, it seems like being together, one body made of light, clanging down through a metal structure for pleasure and edification. Reader, when I think of you, you are in a giant purple chair in a Starbucks, gradually leaking power while Neil Young eats a campfire, then drinks a glass of tears on satellite radio. Hello, I am 40. I've lived in Maryland, Amherst, San Francisco, New York, Ljubljana, Stonington, house of the great ornate wooden frame, holding the mirror the dead saw us in whenever we walked past. New Hampshire, at the base of the White Mountains, on clear blue days, full of dark blue jays, beyond emotion jaggedly piercing. Minneapolis, of which I have spoken earlier and quite enough. Paris, and now San Francisco again. Reader, you are right now in what for me is the future, experiencing something you cannot without this poem. I myself am suspicious and cruel. Sometimes when I close my eyes, I hear a billion workers in my skull hammering nails from which all the things I see get hung. But poems are not museums. They are machines made of words. You pour as best you can your attention in, and in you the poetic state of mind is produced, said one of the many French poets with whom I feel I must agree. Another I know writes his poems on silver paint in a mirror. I feel like a president raising his fist in the sun. Reader, it doesn't seem very strange to be here in this apartment thinking of you and how we will someday, right now, be together. I hear hammering. Workmen are fixing the front steps. As I step out over them into the morning, my mind is wearing a black suit, like a funeral director's assistant, prepared for very serious work that has nothing to do with me. Now in the cafe, very carefully blasting my veins with coffee, asking what do we know and what can we learn. Above me, a painted waterfall and stars on the ceiling. All this peace makes me feel queer. The mysteries, the mysteries we could never have predicted. They become our lives and less confused, calmly in them we rotate, not psychotic or tragic. I have lived in the black crater of feeling every moment is the moment just after one has chosen forever to live in the black crater, of having chosen to live in the black crater. And therefore I know exactly why David Foster Wallace took his life away from himself, even though he was also taking it away from everyone he knew. This morning I was woken by soft, sour breath, a slight fleck of metal in the organic like a field of titanium gravestones growing warmer in the sun. I could breathe it for hours, but now it is gone, which is okay as long as the exhaling somewhere else continues. Her job is to incrementally regulate the conduct 
of those who regulate the city. And mine is to be happy for a few moments, thinking I could actually be one who is happy, watching afternoon fog pour predictably down into sunny Noe Valley from cold Twin Peaks. If you know the story of Marco Polo, you know after a long journey he came upon the Mongol armies, sleeping, and wisely turned back, already composing a much more fabulous story than not being able to report being torn apart by four horses attached to his limbs. From then on, wherever he went or did not, he brought back wondrous marvels and lies. In this poem, every word means exactly what it means when we use it in everyday life. So when I say, I went to the grocery store and felt too ashamed to ask, where are the eggs? Only a very small part of me means, I have returned to report, we have by our mothers been permanently destroyed. <laughs> when, the president, <laughs> when the president opens his hands, a doorknob made of an unnaturally heavy substance floats up to the blue door to the worry factory. Open it and down drift all the 21st century problems. Stick out your tongue and maybe you will taste sunlight and maybe ash. Go, little president, we're all blowing into your wings. We promise to no longer be transactional in our personal dealings. We promise no longer to know some things are important, but one does not need to know why. If the heart makes the sound of two violins sleeping in a baby carriage, then new technologies cannot make us both more loyal and free. Wayward free radical dreams, I want to be loyal. I say it once into the darkness. Come on, all you ghosts. Try to make me forget you. Come with me and I will show you terrible marvels. The little cough I heard in my mind was one I remembered my father made just as he died. We weren't sure if it was his last breath or just some air left in his lungs. Not that it matters. Please don't feel the least bit sorry for me or yourself. Everyone you have ever seen has a dead father. Some are just walking around alive, but it's temporary. So bring your sorrow for everyone out into the street, in the sun. If a nation can fall asleep, it can wake up. Not exactly angry, but a little dizzy with pleasant hunger. A glass of juice, a melancholy. Then remember, we all have something important to do today in the sun. Come on, all you ghosts. All you young holding hands or alone, all you older people, and people of middle indeterminate age, we need you. Winter is not through with us. The sea seems more than a little angry, and over it blows a very cold breeze that is also the color gray. In this room with its black desk, sometimes I hear the crystal factory whirring under a sky the color of black tabletops entranceways and dead light bulbs. Are those your hands on the switches, ghosts? All day I've been feeling blind, dizzy, and enclosed, as if I were being carried in the hand of a great being who insisted he was still, but I could feel the motion. Come on, all you ghosts. Bring me your lucky numbers that failed you. Bring me your boots made of the skin of placid animals who stood for a while in the snow. Bring me your books made of blue sky stitched together with thread, made of the memory of how warm even the most terrible among us has felt the skin of his or her beloved in the morning to be. Come on, all you ghosts. Try to make me forget one summer lost in a reservoir and another I keep in my chest. Come on, all you ghosts. Try to make me repeat the most terrible thing I said to someone, and I will, if the mind of that someone could ever be eased. Come on, let's vote for no one in the election of who is next to die. Come on, all you ghosts. I know you can hear me. I know you are here. I've heard you cough and sigh when I pretend I do not believe I have to say something important. Probably no one will die of anything I say. Probably no one will live even a second longer. Is that true? 
Come on out, you ghosts. You can tell me now. I've seen one of you becoming, and I'm no longer afraid. Just sad for everyone, but also happy. This morning I woke next to the warm skin of my beloved. I do not know what terrible marvels tomorrow will bring. But ghosts, if I must join you, you and I know I've done my best to leave behind this machine. Anyone with a mind who cares can enter. Woo-hoo!